Hello everyone, it's me, Carrie. So I want to talk about this metaphor involving algae that sort of describes what it's like to post creative projects to the internet as an indie developer. And it's sort of related to this quote, often misattributed to Shigeru Miyamoto, which is, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rush game is forever bad. And I'm going to take it in a way that like, I, I don't think is quite typical, so let's get started. So imagine there's this man named John who loves to climb mountains. So he's climbing this mountain and he takes with him a vial of algae water. Now near the top of the mountain, there's this river of crystal clear water. So then John unscrews the vial and slowly lowers it to the level of the water of the river. And it's like one inch away from the water and he's thinking to himself, should I actually dip it below the water or not? So he makes like a free will decision. Okay, we can talk about free will later. But like he's like, I think I will dip it. So he drops it just that extra inch. It's below the water and the algae, you know, spreads into the water and flourishes. 10 miles downstream, there's a village of algae eating humans. So when all this algae comes in, they just gobble it up. And with the extra sustenance, they're able to like build more buildings, produce more offspring, and their village grows to a massive size. It could be millions of people, who knows? And that's because algae can grow exponentially if there's no like c limiting capacity, because maybe the algae is an invasive species with no natural predators. Say this takes 10 years. Now, maybe 10 years later, there's another person named Robert who somehow has access to time travel and he goes back in time and he whispers in John's ear before he dips that algae vial and just says, don't dip it. And because it was such a like off the whim thing to dip the algae, John's like, well, I guess I won't. And then he doesn't dip it. And as a result, the algae doesn't flow down the river and then the village of algae eaters does not grow to a size of millions. So that's the story. But what does it have to do with the quote, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad? It's time to introduce the tale of two games. When I was in middle school to early high school, so that's 2008 to 2013-ish, I made a ton of flash games on the internet. One game was called Get to the Top Although There Is No Top, which I had a hundred variations. And I made lots of videos of me playing through the game here. I also posted G-T-T-T-A-T-I-N-T, -T -T -T, that was the abbreviation, to our Newgrounds page, Photoshop, because Newgrounds was also popping off at the time. And you can see here it is, G-T-T-T-A-T-I-N-T -T -T -T, 2009. Now another game I made around this era in 2012 was called Rising Shrinking Rainbow, which was basically a multiplayer version of Doodle Jump, where you have these jellyfish-esque characters all jumping up, and there's 16 of them. And every time there's a gate in the obstacle course, the last jellyfish to cross that gate gets exploded into many pieces until there's just one winner left. Now I spent a lot of time developing this game in 2012, adding a lot of extra features like AI players, UI on the top left and bottom of the screen, and so on. And to me it was my, one of my proudest gaming projects, because I will admit this game is better made than GTTTATINT. But there's always a next feature I wanted to add before releasing it, like maybe I wanted to add a screen at the end that shows you your gaming stats for the round when you get eliminated. And I never got to the point where I had finally finished all the features I wanted. So by the time high school got really busy for me in 2014, I just abandoned the project to work on academics and this never saw the light of day until 2023 when I was 26 years old and I kind of realized if I don't post this now, I never will because it's a Flash game. Flash was already severely outdated by then, so it's like post it now or never. What I want to point out is that of these two games, GTTTATANT and its variations had a bigger influence on the world because I posted it, which allowed other people to interact with it at a young age and really get engrossed with it. See, this was posted in early 2012, which means any Gen Z kid who was, a, was little at the time could easily get lost and absorbed in this world and spend hours playing it. I do think the fandom was quite small, maybe around a thousand people. But for those thousand people, they made friendships this way. They just remember bonding over school lunch by playing this as they're waiting for like fifth period to start or something. And those are really impactful memories. They're memories that you hold with you into adulthood. Now, Get to the Top was obviously far from perfect. TLDR, Get to the Top is a shit game made by shit 11 year old. But I can't help but feel that if I had the same mindset when I was working on Rising Shrinking Rainbow, where I just post it even if it's not perfect, this game could also have had a big influence on my audience. And you might think, well, now you've shared Rising Shrinking Rainbow to the internet. They're all still here to support you. So what's there really to be sad about? Well, as I've said before, Flash Player is nowhere near as big as it was back in 2012. In 2023, it's been discontinued from all browsers. And it's also true that Gen Z kids have grown up. And I feel like that window of childhood where you can really make core memories and bond with friends is a very precious time that does not last forever. So the kids that are 
creating core memories now are not the same as the ones that I grew up with. How does this relate to the algae bloom? Well, the concept of John dipping the algae bloom into the river is the idea of posting the game publicly. The crazy thing is, you know, if you're a creative kid out there, you probably already have these projects like me with Rising Shrinking Rainbow, meaning you've already done 99% of the hard work to create what it takes to spread. It's like John already having the vial of algae in his hand, like all the DNA and power and influence is in the bottle. The easy part really then is just dipping it into the water. And it's really a shame that like, the tiny choice of whether to dip it in or not has, has huge consequences down the road of whether that you know village turns into a metropolis or not. Obviously this is similar to the butterfly effect. The other reason I like the algae analogy is that, well, John didn't really have to do anything after day one for everything to spur into action, right? He dipped it and then left, which means that from day two to day three, John was like sleeping and the algae population went from like 100 to 500. And then from day three to day four, John is still sleeping. It's 500 to 1000. It's like passive income. It just keeps going. And the same is true when you have like a really nice creative project. Once you post it, you can really just leave. And because the project speaks for itself, it will live a life of its own, just like the algae, which I feel so grateful that games like GTTT, ATANT, or my creative projects like the Evolution Simulator did live lives of their own long after I stopped caring about them. Just like John might not be aware of the thriving algae eating city, I'm not aware of every thriving friend group that formed because of BFDI, but that doesn't make it any less real. And that's just the beauty of the internet. And that's why I feel like you gotta dip as much algae as possible because some of them will die out. Some species just aren't a good fit, just like some games that or some projects you make aren't a good fit for, fit for the internet. But the ones that do will easily make up for the ones that don't. So just keep dipping. So how do we relate all of this to this reasonable quote that a delayed game is eventually good, but a rest game is forever bad, given that it sounds like I'm arguing that you should post a game even if it is still bad. One, I always loved how Newgrounds as a website allowed you to re-upload SWFs, meaning that if you found a typo in your game, you could just upload a new version, which means you can upload a rushed game that isn't perfect and it won't forever be bad because you can tweak on it. Another thing is the idea of barking up the wrong tree. I think if you spend months and months or even years Working on a game that you want to be perfect, but you never test it with your audience and you never can see whether it's really going to click with them and blow up like the algae did, means you could be doing a game concept that is fundamentally not that fun. Even if you perfect it with bells and whistles and make the art look really good, it could just be at its core not a game that spreads. And I bet you wouldn't want to waste a good chunk of your life on an idea that just doesn't click unless you're really committed to an artistic vision that you just know you want to do, which I think most people aren't. So I guess the question then becomes, is there ever a time when it's not a good idea to dip the algae? And I think if content is cringe or harmful or hateful, then you shouldn't. But I think as you're deciding whether or not you should post something, you will know if it's cringe, harmful or hateful. In many cases, you have something like my game here, where I feel very proud of how it's turning out, but I just don't think it's finished yet. But I think the internet should be more accepting of works in progress, knowing that like they, they will improve more in the future because you know there is a chance that that kid gets way too busy with school and this is all they have to offer, in which case we still want to see it. But in the off chance it gets really popular and people want to see more, that would be more motivation for me to actually finish it. And lastly, I want to clarify that I understand what the motivation of this quote is, which is basically, if you're a person waiting for a game, don't rush and pester the artists to get it done faster because generally the artists know what they're doing and you as the audience member need to trust the process. And I agree with that. I think the disconnect is that a lot of AAA game development companies like Valve and Nintendo know what they're doing to some respect in ways that indie game developers don't. For example, say I'm a teenage indie game developer who's adding way more features and scope to my project than I could ever realistically finish. And then, as expected, progress slows to a halt for months, and maybe the fans get mean in the comments and say, oh, where are all the updates we were asking for, Carrie? Oh, Carrie's being so lazy. That in itself is an issue, but maybe I respond by getting defensive and combative, and then I whip out the quote, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rush game is forever bad. Say we run into the issue where I get really busy with school and then never develop Rising Drinking Rainbow ever again. That happens all too often. And while it is true that game developers don't owe fans anything, did I really help anyone out by acting so butthurt and defensive? I think it's too easy to fall into this rut 
where the fans get mad at the creator for taking too long, and the creator gets mad at the fans for being too demanding, and then the vibe people get when they start thinking about the game is just all these negative emotions and no one wins. So here's what I propose. The most productive fan comment is obviously not make games faster, but strangely, it's also not take all the time you need, Carrie. We will support you whenever it comes out. A delayed game is eventually good, but a rush game is forever bad. Because that could delude me into thinking that I should spend all the time I need to add endless features and scope and never finish because of school, and then I feel really guilty because I let all these fans along, and even the patient fans eventually lose hope. And then, because time is a cruel thief, you miss your window of opportunity and it isn't coming back. But instead, I think helpful feedback could be something along the lines of, look, Carrie, I know you like adding features, but I want to let you know that if you release an unfinished work in progress, I will still check it out and appreciate the work you did put in. And from the creator side of things, I think it's important to be able to separate the demanding fans who are really just being a nuisance from the ones who are rooting for you through thick and thin and are willing to give you the benefit of the doubt if you fuck up with a small delay or something. And it's also helpful to recognize if the emotion you're feeling is guilt over being really slow, like, oh my god, all these people were waiting on me and this community is falling apart because I can't give them what's holding them together, oh god, that's all on me. Because if you're feeling guilt and that's what's motivating you to work on the game instead of the love of the craft, then it'll feel like you're doing homework, and that will never be sustainable. So in order to avoid that, I think a good trick is to prioritize the things that really make the game development fun, and cut out the features that you thought you just should do for the sake of the community but don't actually enjoy. Because if you're doing them for fun, it'll just become second nature, and it'll take much less effort to get back into it. Because the goal, my friends, is to dip, dip, dip.